So why have we been made to wait for half an hour to, you're report, requesting to, speak with to a report a kidnapping? But you're requesting to speak with a supervisor. This is a kidnapping. Okay. Do you understand that? No, we, we want right to here press... In Title 18, 242, it says I'm just including letting you know kidnapping. That a supervisor will we be We were made to wait guys. half an hour to report a kidnapping. And everything like that. Did you, you guys take an oath to, to the Constitution? I'm just letting you know. Did you guys take that the an person you want to speak to will be available at two. Okay, you're dismissed. So can you send him? Stop can you send him? Can Can you start the paperwork on? I'd like to press charges on the post office. Okay. So, so let's start that. Building, you're going to need to contact the federal office. They have their own. Why did you guys show? Why did you? Is that out of your no, jurisdiction? No, what were you doing in there? Charges? I'm I'm not too sure about that. Why so did you guys show up on that. a federal building? Okay. So. Why That's, did you guys you show up on a them, you're going to need to speak to She's them. asking you a question. Why okay. did you guys show up on they a federal building? They contacted us for a trust. And we're contacting we're you to press charges. I understand so, that. So what I'm saying... So talk your saying, way out of that. I'm not talking my way out of anything. Well, then okay, let's, well, start the let's start the paperwork. Let's start it. And we're ready. You Why we're waiting. Okay. No. But while we're waiting for the supervisor, said, you can start the paperwork. Let's start it. We want, we you can't start the paperwork? You can't start the paperwork? All I'm saying is... You have the authority to ask people so many questions and to bully them, but you can't start the paperwork so that we can start pressing charges. We're not having this anymore. Okay. You get it? And you We're can, sick you can, and tired of this with you guys. The so are you, are you refusing to start these I'm, police reports? ...an unlawful imprisonment and kidnapping yesterday because we have here, uh, uh, do you know what the penal code is for trespassing? Mm -hmm. Do you know what it is? Mm -hmm. What is it? 602. Okay, can you show me anywhere in the uh, trespassing uh, penal code of 602 how it is that my friends um, violated that yesterday? I don't know who, what friend you're talking about. Well, I had two friends. Uh, one was actually arrested. Yes. Uh, can you show us in here uh, what he violated in the penal code 602? I didn't arrest That him. would cause you... Okay, well, you're the he supervisor. He was there. You can show he us. Did. He didn't arrest him. Him. But you were there. Okay, well, are you... Do you, you have you anything else that you need from us? We want to press right, charges. Right, are you well, if it's the federal law that you're trying to press charges on, are you talking... What, what, what do you want to press charges on? On the officer and on the post office. The that post office? The, po office. the post office is the federal government. We don't, we don't do federal government. Then why did you so come arrest our friend yesterday? Your friend was... No, he wasn't. Just, oh. You can finish. I'm not trying to be rude. You guys want to be rude, you guys want to be rude, but I, as a public citizen, don't have to listen to you guys being disrespectful or rude. Oh, absolutely, you do. You're no, public servants. You work for public, us. Public servants doesn't give you the authority. This Karen might be the stupidest one I've ever seen in my entire life. Well, this story takes place at a gas station where Karen went to fill up her gas. Apparently, she always bought the cheapest gas available, and on this particular day, that was diesel. But her car didn't take diesel gas. So within two minutes of leaving the gas station, her car stalled and got out of her control and she sideswiped the car. When the police arrived, they gave her a ticket because obviously she was the one that was in the wrong. Well, Karen ran back to the gas station and then demanded that they pay for the ticket and damage to the car as it was their fault. Because, you know, in a Karen's mind, they're never the ones responsible for any of the problems they cause. When the gas station refused to pay her, she said she was going to get an attorney and sue them for the money and for causing her emotional stress. Well, she's probably going to have emotional damage after she loses that court case. Karen thinks I'm hacking the airplane, so I'm a web developer, and in the course of my work I use the command line quite a bit. The other day I was catching a flight to see my friends, knock off work a bit early and assume I'm going to get my work done on the flight. Get through the airport and on the plane, up until now things are business as usual. Get on the flight, reach 30k feet, and throw open the laptop to get some work done. I'm typing away when someone taps me on the shoulder, an older lady who was apparently going to the bathroom. Karen, excuse me, what are you doing? Me, working. Karen, no, what is that on your screen, points to my terminal window. Me, my work ma'am, can you please let me get back to it? She walks off and I think it was just some curious lady, whatever, get back to work. As I'm working I can hear the lady come up to a flight attendant and start talking. I don't really listen in but one sentence raises my eyebrows. I think that man is trying to hack the airplane. Jesus Christ I think to myself. And shortly enough a flight attendant come up and asks what I'm doing. I politely explain to her my line of work, the tool I am currently using, and just some quick facts about what I do, cocktail party type of stuff. The flight attendant understands and leaves me alone to continue my work, apparently explaining to Karen that I'm doing nothing wrong. Karen then proceeds to walk to the back of the airplane and get the attention of the rear flight attendant. While I was not privy to this conversation, Karen apparently claimed that she was a security expert and that she knew certifiably, that I was indeed trying to take remote control of the aircraft. Second flight attendant comes, this time much more worried, with Karen in tow, and ask what I am doing. As I try to explain again, 
Karen jumps in and tries to explain for me. We argue for a hot second and then I'm like F it and ask her, if you're such an expert, please break down for the flight attendant what exactly it is I'm doing. Karen, well he is clearly hacking the aircraft. Me, okay great, but what exactly am I doing? Hacking is pretty vague, if you're such an expert you should have a good idea. Karen, well, I'm a manager, I'm not in the weeds like my engineers are. Me, then let me ask you again, if you're a manager that isn't technical, then how are you able to discern what exactly it is that I'm doing? You said it yourself you don't know the details. Karen, doesn't say a word. Flight attendant, ma'am will you please go back to your seat? Karen walks back to her seat and the story ends there. Later when drink service was going on, the flight attendants forgot to charge me for some liquor. Whoopsies. Brown shirts. Ma'am. You're just following Ma orders, right? Ma'am, just go. Just following yeah, orders? No, I'm doing my job. Yeah, following orders. I'm doing my That's job. what the Nazi officer did, followed their orders, do you right? Have a job? I do have a job. Do you follow rules on that job? Listen, ma'am, if I was medically no, hurt and they denied me service, they would be in jail. Do you follow rules exactly on what y'all are going to be doing. Who's going to jail? No. Ma medically deny me service. It's going to come. I cannot believe you brown shirt.